Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I am roaming around the office so I can show you a video about Wi-Fi roaming. If you look over here at this tool I'm using called Wavemon, you'll see the mode manage connected to, and you'll see the MAC address of the different access points that it's transitioning to. Now I'm going to be doing this demo with Unify, and uh, it's not specific to Unify though. This is a generalized video that dives into the different methodologies and how roaming works and how to optimize it for your network. During this little intro here, I have now wandered through three different access points and switched three different times, and you can see the ping is consistent. So we're gonna talk about how that works, how 802.11r works, and whether or not 802.11r is right for you. Before we dive into the details, let's first if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. We're gonna start talking right here about the client. And I'm holding a Pixel 4 XL phone, which does support 802.11r. So I don't have any problems roaming. My laptop supports 802.11r. It doesn't have any problems roaming. Whether or not you have all of your clients that have proper support for the 802.11r standard is really important. And let me explain. The client makes and has the biggest influence in where it connects to. It looks at the scanning of the networks around it. It looks at the SSID it's associated with and says, hey, there's that same SSID, but it's a signal that is stronger and I'm just gonna go over there. It is constantly conflated with calling it meshing and things like that, but it specifically is called roaming. Meshing is something different. And what I mean by that is the ability for your device, your client to roam from like this access point here to another access point in the office is very much a client decision. Now these do influence it. So that's the part we're going to talk about, but it is important that the client has full support. And I bring this up because, well, if you're doing a lot of corporate networks, you'll find a lot of oddball devices. And even though they may have been made after the 802 11R adoption in 2008 and a revision in 2012, and you're like, but this device was made in 2018. It should completely support it. Uh, anyone who spends time in the corporate world realizes, well, some of these weird devices and special OEM devices are not always built on complete following of the standards. Therefore, this is where the first problem you run into is. Now for home users, it's usually not an issue at all because most home users I know have a lot of modern devices. They have their phones and their laptops that are relatively new and the standard's been around a while, so they fully support it and they will roam seamlessly between these networks. Now, I'm not going to dive through, but leave you links, of course, so you can read through the 802.11r standard. And I think there's a good article right here I'll leave a link to on Wi-Fi Fast Roaming Simplified, and it breaks down some of the details. The too long didn't read is there is an eight-step process they break down for how you authenticate to an access point. Now, with 802.11r, that only has to happen on the first access point. Every subsequent in the same grouping of devices access point that you have can do a four step process because once you authenticate to the first access point, it can automatically skip those steps going, we've already authenticated you, we're just gonna let you associate here. This allows that fast transition for roaming, which is outstanding. It's how I was able to walk without any ping delays going from device, device, device was with this turned on. Once they authenticate to the first one, it just, pass me off to the other ones very seamlessly. Now it still works if you don't have fast roaming and it can re-authenticate. In 2020, most modern devices authenticate relatively fast, but that is further complicated by two things. One, if you're using WPA, PSK, yes, it does work with that. If you're using something more advanced, Radius, or other authentication methods where there's a server and authentication servers gotta be passed along to and behind, that actually becomes more important to use something like 802.11r for seamless transitions because it does work for both. It has to do, do that more complicated authentication each time. That could create a real problem and cause a delay. 
Now let's dive a little bit deep. I said this is more or less platform agnostic, but I'll show you where the settings are inside of Unify, but you can find equivalent settings in well, most any of the modern Wi-Fi devices, Wi-Fi access points. Unify lists fast roaming as beta. This is them favoring the corporate networks that, well, they know have a lot of strange devices and they turned it on by default, more people would have problems because of these devices not completely supporting it, as I said in the beginning. But as I said, for most home users and devices or networks that have a lot of modern devices, turning it on, I've generally not found any problems. It's not absolutely necessary. And this is the fast roaming overview. Just like the Network World article, it breaks down by turning this on, how the transition happens uh, before a BSS transition, the transition process, and how that process is simplified by turning it on. Basically the authentication I talked about there, pretty straightforward. Then is the other option. And this is really important too, and that's the BSS transition frames. Once again, it has to be supported by the client. These Unify access points, such as the one next to me, does support this. And they have a list of which ones do, which most of the modern ones all have the support. But BSS transition, when a device has a weak signal, the UAP will send BSS transition frame instead of a disconnect frame for the client. Now that option, when you create a Unify network is right here, allow BSS transition with WNM. And what those are is management frames that are sent to say, hey, your signal's weak, you should go somewhere else. And it's a soft ask. If there's not somewhere else to go, it's not gonna go. Versus a, let's just disconnect because if we the client clearly doesn't wanna transition, we're just gonna kick it off the network and it should bounce over to here. These are a couple different ways that this transition happens when there's something else to transition to. Now there's one more thing that's really important as well, and that is the often misunderstood RSSI and signal strength. And people assume they want to start tuning these. So when you have the device and you say, hey, I wanna kick people off when they don't have a signal because if they transition to the other device, they're gonna have a better time and it's gonna be a better and faster Wi-Fi experience. And why won't my client switch? So this is where we go into switching the RSSI. Now this is a place where I see people getting themselves into lots of trouble. And what do I mean by that? They set these minimums that are unrealistic, that they either connect fast or not at all. And they do have some recommendations in here. And they've actually added some warnings for people who set this wrong. So much of our consulting work is fixing when people started monkeying with all the settings instead of leaving them at auto. I rarely ever have to actually set this because it isn't as necessary as people think. But if you have designed a network and you really want them to always, the clients that are connecting to be on the fastest one, you can carefully tune this and troubleshoot this. What this does is sets a minimum standard by which the access point will allow a client connect. So if the signal's too weak, sorry, you can't hang out here. The signal's too weak, go somewhere else. The problem becomes if I have an access point here and we'll just pretend this is an access point so I didn't grab another one and I want it to go to whichever one is the closest that works. What if I'm over here and there's not a closer one? Well, now, you know, let's say you're just on the edge of this access point outside, it keeps kicking you off because it says your signal doesn't meet the minimum. And this is sometimes a problem. And Wi-Fi is, well, challenging at times because of all the different materials it does or does not pass through, and it can create a lot of problems. So my best recommendation is only use this if absolutely necessary and look for other methods such as proper placement of Wi-Fi and proper distance between them and even turning down, I know it sounds backwards, turning down the access point power if necessary so you have a little bit less overlap so it chooses the right one. And that's another tuning option in terms of, you know, when you're thinking about these, make sure the channels aren't overlapping, make sure the power bands don't completely overlap or yet you're gonna confuse the device as to which one it needs to go to. So as far as turning this on, it's pretty safe, generally speaking, to have fast roaming turned on, provided you have a lot of modern devices and they have properly followed the standards that have been out for a while and implemented them in each device. Even without that on, as I said, with the BSS transition, and this is specific to uh, Unify, which comes with this default turned off, yes, it will still transition. It's the same thing with a lot of other access points as well. I just don't have everyone set up here as a demo. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit better how the roaming works. I will leave links to each of these so you can read a little deeper. The Network World article dives a little bit deeper into the topic overall, uh, but I'll, the Unify ones, and if you look up Cisco in the same kind of search terms of how BSS and fast roaming works in Cisco or any of the other popular devices, almost every company, every major company has a write-up on how it works 
products and where the options are for their devices. All right, I'll leave links below and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.